Good evening, one and all. Myself, Dr. Rupasri, uh, consultant in obstetrics and gynecology, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to discuss the topic on cardiovascular changes in pregnancy. Uh, many will be a little confused in remembering all the anatomical points and physiological points. So, let me make them a little clear so that you can answer all the questions correctly. Okay, now the cardio, cardiovascular changes in the pregnancy. Okay. Cardiovascular changes in pregnancy. Okay, now this is the topic. And for this, we should get clarity regarding both the anatomical findings and the clinical signs which we observe. Anatomical changes and the clinical signs which we observe in the ward. Okay. First, let us see the anatomical changes that occur in pregnancy. First point. Because of the enlarging uterus, what happens is the diaphragm is elevated. Is elevated. Okay. So, the uterus, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. Now it has come to almost 36 weeks. Okay, 38 weeks. What happens? The diaphragm is getting moved above and above. Okay, is elevated. So what happens when it gets elevated? The heart is pushed. Upwards. And outwards. Okay. So, when the uterus is getting enlarged, the diaphragm is pushed elevated and the heart is pushed in upwards and outward direction. And the second point is apex beat is shifted to fourth intercostal space, which is 2.5 centimeters away from mid clavicular line okay these are the two anatomical changes only anatomical we just observe it okay anatomical changes now the questions which can be asked in this are see the regarding the apex bit they will be asking okay this is the most important line this whole slide and now let us see the physiological or clinical signs what are the clinical signs you will be observing in the ward? First point, the pulse rate will increase. Second point, we observe the systolic, systolic murmur. Okay, systolic murmur that it is heard over the apical or pulmonary area because of decreased blood viscosity decreased blood viscosity and torsion of greater vessels greater vessels torsion now the third point is most important is hissing murmur. That is continuous hissing murmur. It is also known as mammary murmur. Okay. It is seen over or observed over tricuspid area. Okay. Because of increased blood flow. Blood flow through the mammary area. Okay. Now the fourth one is what we observe in the ECG is left axis deviation. And in case of 2D echo, what we see is increased left and right atrial damages. 
and now we can auscultate this third and fourth heart sound also. These are all the clinical signs which can say in the in the words which we observe in the words. What are those? The pulse rate will be increased. So the pulse rate is increased. We observe the systolic murmur over the pulmonary area. Okay, this is the question. What all the clinical signs which we see are systolic murmur, the mammary murmur or the continuous hissing murmur because of the increase of the blood flow through the mammary area. In ECG, we see the left axis deviation. In 2D echo, the diameters of both the atrium are enlarged, increased and we can also auscultate the third and fourth heart sounds in the pregnancy. All these six points are very important that they may ask in the viva or four mark or multiple choice questions also. And observe this diagram. See, these all the dotted lines are the presence of the diaphragm, normal level of the chest in a non-pregnant woman. See, it is little down. But when compared to that of the pregnant woman, the pregnant woman, it is it is pushed upwards. The diaphragm is elevated so that the heart is pushed little upwards and outwards. Upwards and outwards. Okay? Next. All these six points are very important to remember. Now next. Let us see what is cardiac output. Cardiac output. Cardiac output starts to increase from 6 weeks and continue till 32 weeks. Okay? Continue till 32 weeks. Thereafter, it remains static. Thereafter, it remains static. In labor, cardiac output increase by 50%. In postpartum, the level increase by 70% and so for this condition, the postpartum period, observation in the postpartum period is also very important because there may be sudden rise in the cardiac output. Next, cardiac output is increased in left lateral, right lateral, and knee chest position okay and it is decreased in sitting standing supine position okay. now next why the cardiac output is increased why why Cardiac output increased because, because the heart rate is increased. First point. As I said, now only the pulse rate is increased because heart rate is increased. And the second point is increased oxygen requirement in pregnancy. Increased oxygen requirement in cases of pregnancy. For this, the cardiac output is raised. And the last important point in cardiac output is auto transfusion phenomenon. Auto trans. What is this auto transfusion? See, the uterus after delivery. What happens is after delivery, the amount of blood which is present in the uterus will start moving to the heart. Okay. This amount of blood present in uterus after delivery move to the heart. The sixth point is patient becomes and cardiac output becomes normal or pre-pregnant, pre-labor by one hour and pre-pregnant by four weeks. After labor, the cardiac output comes to pre-labor values. Within one hour, it will become normal. 
and pre-pregnant it is about four weeks okay now let us see the important questions which can be asked here from when it is raised up to well 32 weeks is the most important week because blood volume plasma volume rbc and also the cardiac output everything corresponds to 32 weeks and this important it is when it is raised is left lateral right lateral knee chest position is very very important when it is decreased is important and next, why the cardiac output is increasing? The reason, reason is very important. Auto transfusion phenomenon, and when it becomes pre labor values or pre pregnant values, so almost five to six MCQs are present only in this slide. If you remember this well, now you can answer all the questions correctly. Next, okay, a small diagram. See, yeah, as I have said, this next we'll talk about the blood pressure and then I will explain the diagram to you all. Blood pressure. blood pressure is cardiac output into systemic vascular resistance. Cardiac output is increased but in pregnancy what happens is because of the smooth muscle relaxing effect Because of the smooth muscle relaxing effect of progesterone, nitric oxide and prostaglandins, the systemic vascular resistance decreases. Even though the cardiac output is increased, systemic vascular de resistance decreases more. So, in pregnancy, blood pressure is decreased especially of diastolic diastolic blood pressure is more decreased okay and now see what happens is this is a cardiac output which is raised and raised but see the systemic vascular resistance is decreased more and more okay therefore the bp will be maintaining normal or it is decreased for this only i have get this image next we'll talk about the venous pressure venous pressure normally what happens is the gravid uterus compress the common iliac veins therefore therefore the femoral pressure femoral venous pressure increases in non pregnant the value is about 10 cm of water pregnancy with supine is 25 cm of water but Pregnancy with standing position is 100 centimeters of water. Therefore, see, pregnancy with standing position is 100 centimeters of water. Therefore, it leads to physiological edema. And its treatment is rest. If we take the rest, the physiological edema will get decreased. Okay. Now, what are the important questions which can be asking are uh, why the blood pressure is decreased in pregnancy? Because the systemic vascular resistance is decreased, the blood pressure is decreased, and more systolic is decreased when compared to that of the diastolic. Next, regarding the venous pressure, they'll be asking why is venous pressure is there and what is the treatment regarding the venous pressure? Okay, for this, the these are what I have said is all the explanation only. How it is in the non pregnant state, pregnancy with supine position, and pregnancy with standing position. Okay, almost two to three questions are covered in this slide. And the last is supine hypotension syndrome. Supine hypotension syndrome. That's fine. What happens is the gravid uterus. Compress the inferior vena cava. 
normally what happens is collaterals are established between the para vertebral and azygous veins okay sometimes these collaterals fail to open up okay and patients complain of patient complain of hypotension tachycardia and syncopal attacks so what is the treatment we should ask the patient by in left lateral position it is simple thing see the gravid uterus will compress the inferior vena cava and also the common iliac veins because of compressing of common iliac veins femoral venous pressure will be raised okay because of compression of the inferior vena cava in the supine position this is in supine position okay so what happens in supine position Therefore, the collateral sometimes will fail to open up and which results in hypertension, tachycardia, and syncopal attacks. Okay, mostly they'll be asking what is the treatment of immediate treatment of the supine hypertension syndrome is ask the patient to lie down in left lateral position. And these are the cardiovascular changes, and it will be very easy to remember when you when you think what is the reason of the condition, then you'll remember it more accurately. Okay, I think this video will be helpful to you all. And okay, let us meet with the next video. Thank you.